Our next presenter is Elizabeth Redstone. Elizabeth is a collaborative artist and teacher living in Portland. She says, I grew up in South Portland, Maine with three brothers who I think are some pretty awesome dudes. None of whom are redheads like me though. And now I live in Portland. I studied illustration at the New Hampshire Institute of Art with the intention of becoming a children's book illustrator. I'm currently the studio manager at Artiscope Studios and an instructor there. Her friend, Mary Duggan says, Beth filled every available piece of paper with her artwork from the time she could hold a pencil or marker or crayon, no piece of paper was safe. <laughs> Beth's backyard homework sessions with a friend were often drawing sessions, always a great way to warm up for any endeavor, although of course we eventually realized that for Beth, it isn't a warm up, it is the endeavor. Please welcome Elizabeth Redstone. I should say that friend was not a friend, but that's my mother, so that's a great way to have a relationship. <laughs> Woo! All Even right. better. I'm fine. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. So, um, I actually wanted to start talking about what it's like being a redhead and how we form our identities as a ginger in a society that might look at you and say, oh, is that your natural hair color? Pretty regularly. Or, um, you know, what are these biases? Do you have a bad temper? Or what's your family genealogy? And are you Irish? Are you Scottish? What's it all about? And shockingly, this happens all the time. Maybe not shockingly, maybe you've asked somebody this before. But yes, this is my natural hair color. And no, we're not endangered species. We're not exotic unicorns. It's actually a recessive gene. And there's, National Geographic tells me that we're similar to white black bears. And in case you don't know, or in case you're not familiar, white black bears are literally white black bears, but they're born to two black bears. And it's a recessive gene, and it's there. So all you need is to have it somewhere in your history. And there it is. So no, we're not dying out, it's not endangered, and uh, you guys don't need to worry about it. We're here forever. <laughs> in fact, you can't get rid of us that easily. It's like cockroaches, we're here. <laughs> we're sticking around. <laughs> um, when I started doing my artwork, a lot of the time I was putting in my hopes and dreams for people that I really cared about. So this is my older brother, James, who is now interning, no, not interning, he's working, currently employed with Senator Susan Collins in DC. And when I made this, it was at a time in his life when he was feeling very confused and distracted about where he wanted to go. And this is my younger brother, Sam. My younger brothers are twins. They're pretty awesome people. They're pretty awesome dudes. And uh, I was fortunate enough to grow up in a family where we, despite having four kids, we all had some pretty individual characteristics about us, except for the twins, unfortunately, because they're the twins. But here they are. <laughs> um, so Sam and Tom, the youngest, are the twins, and then there's James, the oldest, and then there's me, who, again, the only redhead, because it's the recessive gene, and I'm the Neanderthal among us, according to my older brother. And so what I was doing very often was kind of chronicling what was happening in my life. So here is actually the transition from being an art student in college and being a real adult. And what, <laughs> what is a real adult? Like, what does a real adult do? pay your loans, ideally, pay your bills, ideally. Um, but I really just wanted to color and color outside the lines and enjoy life. And so I took off for a trip to go see my friend Allison in France, where I was lucky enough to live for free in her apartment for a week and go wander along the Republique and the cathedral and you know, go experience France, but I didn't speak French, which was a problem when she was off teaching in class. So a lot of people would come up and speak to me and I couldn't communicate except through my paintings. And other than that, I mean, there are some pretty weird, I don't know, occurrences that would happen because I was a redhead. So I was called Mon Petit Carret and some gentleman pet me on the head and held my hand on the metro and that was, Cool, I guess, and, <laughs> um, and I was also called Little Red Riding Hood because I made the unfortunate mistake of wearing a red raincoat while I was in France with red hair in the countryside. Um, 
So I came back from there and I really wanted to continue creating work. And so when I'm creating work, you have to create reference and sometimes your reference doesn't go as planned. So this is my old roommate, Emma Sue, and it probably took us 50 takes to get a picture that I could work from because we laugh. When you stare somebody in the eye, I don't know if you've ever done this and you tried to stare someone in the eye and be serious, it's really difficult, especially if it's somebody that you know very well, right? So <laughs> this is the result. I was never serious and I couldn't really pull it together. Um, but in this collaborative effort, you find this is a picture by Ben DeHaan, who is a photographer in the Portland area. And when you're trying to pull it together, you start helping other people with their creative vision and their creative endeavors. And you want to help get, I don't know, get them off in their creative way. And sorry, mom, because you're in the audience. <laughs> um, uh, so then from there, I started working on uh, a series with my roommate who not only have we shared a studio for three years, but we also lived in the same room for a summer, which is quite an experience when you're 23 and sharing a room with somebody else. And we decided that we wanted to explore same spaces, same subject and different perspectives because that is life. Like we're all in the same space and we are all experiencing the same thing, but sometimes we're looking at it in different ways. So this is what we were working on with that. And from there, I was like, this is awesome. I really love working with other people. So I decided to continue exploring that in other ways. And well, this is actually poor ordering on my pants. This is me bringing back my experience in Le Mans to Portland and experiencing the environment and doing really quick drawings and really connecting with the community that's around me as opposed to um, feeling anxious about making the art and making the perfect art and doing that kind of thing. So, so one of the ways that I do that is doing games with friends. So here we have my roommate Dan and Whitney are actually collaborators, uh, collaborators on this. And I don't know if you've ever done this, but you fold a paper up in three pieces, and then each person draws part of it without knowing what the other person has drawn. Um, and here we have where I created a greater collaborative project with my friend Miles Turner, who is also a painter in the Portland area. And we're actually working on a painting that's five feet by three feet, and it's the same painting, and we work on it at the same time, which a lot of people wonder about what we're doing. Um, and all it is is being really communicative with the person that you're working with and you know, talking about what you want to do and trusting the other person to go the same way that you're going. And also it's a release of authorship. It's a release of control. You're not concerned about having the great masterpiece painting that I'm not looking to have at 24, but to have something that makes sense to me and is part of the experience that I'm working on. So that is what we're working on right now. And that is, uh, that is my collaborative creative experience. <laughs> Thanks, Beth. As you know, art plus community equals a big PK win. So thank you. <laughs>